I'm Carly. I'm Jackson. And I'm Angela. We're environmental educators through New York State Parks. There are a variety of mammals that have adapted to live in the Finger Lakes, and today we'll be introducing you to a few. But first, what is a mammal? You probably know that you, a dog, and a rabbit are all mammals, but what do they all have in common? What really makes a mammal a mammal? The word mammal comes from the Latin word mamma, meaning breast. Mammals produce milk to feed their young from special glands in their breasts called mammary glands. The purpose of feeding milk to their young is to give them the best chance of survival by providing nutrition and immune protection after birth. All mammals, with the exception of platypuses and echidnas, give live birth. Most infant mammals lack the ability to care for themselves when they're first born. Some are even born blind and hairless, so unlike reptiles and amphibians, who fend for themselves soon after hatching, mammals are typically cared for by their mothers until they can care for themselves. Also, like Angela said, they are dependent on their mother's milk to get strong and healthy. All mammals have hair or fur. Even whales have hair in the fetal stages. Mammals use their hair to insulate their bodies, a necessary adaptation for weathering frigid winters. Fur isn't just useful for insulating body heat, however. The sebaceous glands, which is found in mammals' skin attached to hair follicles, secretes a waxy, water-repellent substance called sebum. In hot environments, sebum mixes with sweat to produce a sheet of liquid which cools the body by preventing the loss of sweat to evaporation. Mammals are endotherms. This means that they can regulate their own body temperature instead of being dependent on the temperature of their environment, as ectotherms are. This allows mammals to be active in all kinds of weather, where ectotherms like reptiles and amphibians go dormant. So, mammals have mammary glands, give birth to live young, have hair or fur, and are endotherms. Now that we know what makes a mammal, how can we further distinguish differences between multiple different species of mammal? We can do this by determining what they eat. The three distinct groups for what mammals eat are carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores. Carnivores, animals that eat flesh, have very defined canine teeth used for tearing meat, combined with a limited number of molars, like this bobcat. Bobcats eat a wide variety of animals, from deer to wild turkey to mice. Their sharp teeth and claws help them hunt for their prey. There are times when carnivores eat things other than meat, but it depends on the species. Herbivores have teeth that are highly specialized for eating plants. They have molars for grinding that are wider and flatter than those of carnivores and omnivores, and incisors perfect for tearing plant material apart. Wake-tailed deer like this one have been known to eat over 600 different plants, from grasses to bark to berries, and even crops planted by humans, they aren't picky. You likely already know what an omnivore is because you more than likely are one. Omnivorous mammals eat both plants and meat and therefore need varied teeth to handle whatever food source they might come across. Omnivores like this American black bear are opportunistic eaters. They mostly eat grasses, roots, and berries using their broad molars in the back of the mouth to crush plant material. The sagittal crest on the back of the skull is a protrusion that, which attaches to chewing muscles to give the animal a stronger bite. They will also eat fish and other mammals, including carrion, which is decaying animal flesh, with their long, sharp canines to tear and pull at the flesh, but are also used for ripping open dead logs when looking for insects. The front incisors are like the Swiss Army knife for omnivores, being capable of tearing meat or clipping vegetation off of plants. For carnivores and omnivores, predation is the main mechanism for energy moving up the food chain in which one animal hunts another. Predators and prey co-evolved in a constant arms race to be better adapted to hunt or avoid being hunted. A few of these adaptations are commonly reflected in the skull anatomy of predators and prey. Prey animals, or animals that are eaten by other animals, have adaptations to avoid being captured by predators. Looking at this white-tailed deer skull, we can see that their orbital sockets are on the sides of their head. This allows them to have a wide field of vision so they can watch for predators to their sides and behind them. They also have long nasal passages in relation to their skulls, showing they rely highly on their excellent sense of smell to detect predators. Their comparatively small auditory bully indicates a relatively moderate sense of hearing, 
showing that they rely more on smell and vision to avoid predators. Carnivores and omnivores can be both predator and prey. The animals that are exclusively prey are herbivores, so they have many adaptations that we talked about earlier. Predators, animals that hunt and eat other animals, have four facing orbital sockets. The use of having four facing eyes for a predator is that they can judge depth. Depth is important for tracking and pursuing prey. Predators have very large auditory bullae as they rely on their advanced hearing to be able to hear movement from potential prey and track it. An easy way to remember the difference between a predator and a prey is with this rhyme. Eyes in front, the animal hunts. Eyes on the side, the animal hides. The little brown bat is a species of mouse-eared microbat found in North America and one of two species native to New York. The other is the big brown bat. Despite the similar names, they're not very closely related and in fact belong to different genuses. The little brown bat, as its name indicates, is quite small, with a body measuring 9 centimeters and a wingspan of 23 centimeters. They are insectivores and use echolocation to capture mosquitoes and other pesky insects. They must eat half their body weight in insects per night to prevent malnourishment. New mothers sometimes eat more than their own body weight in a single night. Eating insects plays an important role in the bat's ecosystem by controlling bug populations near their roost sites. Speaking of roosts, little brown bats tend to roost in caves, trees, rocks, and sometimes buildings and colonies of thousands. In the winter, they hibernate, able to withstand a temperature change of 120 degrees Fahrenheit without sustaining damage. What is very damaging to bats, however, is a fungal disease known as white nose syndrome, transmitted by humans into various caves and killing millions of bats. Bats are very important both for pest control and pollination. Scientists are working hard to save them. One thing you can do is provide them habitat. You can buy or make your own bat house and provide your local bat family with safe, disease-free housing, and they'll pay you back by getting rid of all your mosquitoes. Taking a look at this skull, you will notice sharp front teeth and long canine teeth, as well as a set of molars. This tells you that this animal is an omnivore. You will also notice side-facing orbital sockets, a long nasal passage, and small auditory bullae. The mammal is most likely a prey. This skull belongs to a Virginia possum. Possums eat a variety of foods including small rodents, insects, worms, slugs and snails, frogs, snakes, and birds. They also eat vegetables, berries, nuts and fruits, garbage, pet food, and birdseed. Possums are unique in many ways. First, they are the only marsupial native to North America. Marsupials are mammals that have a pouch intended for carrying their young. One marsupial you may be familiar with is the kangaroo carrying the joeys in their pouch. Ever hear the phrase, playing possum? This phrase refers to the possum's ability to fake its own death when facing a particularly strong threat. During this state, the possum is also able to emit an offensive odor that makes them even smell like they are dead. Then when the threat is gone, the possum can safely get up and continue on with its day. As I had said earlier, possums eat snakes. Over a long time, possums have developed an immunity to most snake venom native to where they live, which helps them capture a snake to be eaten. Naturally, possums have a lower than usual body temperature, which gives them an advantage over catching the deadly disease, rabies. The low body temperature is not a suitable environment for the virus to live, so it is very unusual for a possum to have rabies. Lastly, possums use their tail as a fifth appendage, which is very useful in helping them carry grass and leaves to which they build their nests, as well as grip size of trees and branches for stability when climbing. Mammals have evolved over time to have many unique adaptations. We hope you've learned something about the mammals that can be found right here in the Finger Lakes. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe. Bye! Bye.